morning children today i am going to discuss with you all a new lesson pressure in liquids and gases so let's begin the lesson children in the beginning of the lesson in the first page you can see two experiments here the science teacher who had come to inaugurate the science club he began it with an experiment first he placed a wooden ruler on a table and some part of the wooden ruler was projected outwards as you can see from the picture then a newspaper it was folded eight times and it was placed on the above of the ruler then he asked the boy to press quickly on the free end of the ruler with his hand as you can see from the picture the boy did it and the paper fell down next what he did means he unfolded the paper as you can see from the picture and he placed it over the ruler of the table then he asked the boy to press the ruler again in this case he could never raise the paper or nor make it fall down this is because in the second case the paper is spread over the scale so when he was asked to strike the scale it moved only to some extent here the density of air between the table and the paper is reduced and the outside pressure or outside air which is exerted on the paper is greater so the air between the table and the uh, paper was very low so outside air the force exerted on the paper was high so this is due to the force of air the paper couldn't rise up so there are many properties of air air is present all around us air requires space air possesses weight air exerts pressure and air has no definite shape so these are some of the properties of air now under the topic forward and backward take a syringe see this is a syringe the needle part you have to remove the needle of the syringe then you can observe the working of the piston 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 is this is the piston you can observe the working of the piston by pulling it back and pushing it in when the pushed in piston is pulled back when the pulled in piston is pushed back what happened the air rushes into the barrel of the syringe the air rushes into the barrel through the open end of the syringe we removed the needle isn't it so through when we removed the needle it is open there so when the piston is pulled back the air was able to enter into the syringe now when the piston is pushed in the air moves out through the open end of the syringe so this is how the working of the piston now this experiment can be done in two ways first you have to push the piston into the syringe then you close the open end of the syringe with your finger 
as you can see from the picture close it and then pull the piston back quickly and release it you have to pull the piston back and you quickly release it so what happened means here when the piston was pushed in no air was there inside the uh, barrel no air was there inside the barrel of the syringe okay and uh, when uh, the piston was pulled back as you have closed the open end of the syringe air couldn't come inside it so the air cannot enter into the barrel because the open end of the syringe is closed so the air pressure inside the barrel has decreased so the outer pressure pull the piston into the barrel when you released it when you pulled back and released it the outside pressures force had pushed the piston inside the barrel because there is no air we know that air requires space but here there is no air so when we pulled the piston back and released it the piston went inside so this is one experiment similarly in the next experiment this can be done in another way keep the piston pulled back okay you should not close the open end after you pulling it back then only you have to close the open end of the syringe with your finger now push the piston in and release it in this case we have pulled the piston back in this case we have pulled the piston back and then only we when the piston was pulled uh, back air could come through the open end of the syringe after pulling the piston back only we are closing it with the finger the open end we are closing it with the finger so the air was there inside the barrel of the uh, syringe now when you push it inside the when you push the piston inside and pulled it back or released it there was air inside the uh, barrel of the syringe so the air got compressed we need that we told that the air requires space the air could not go outside also because the open end is closed so the air became compressed so this air will push the piston outside outwards so this is what is happened in the two cases here the air pressure is acting so in the first case the piston was pulled inwards because there was no air so there were space for the piston to go inwards in the second case since there was air the piston couldn't go inwards it the air pushed the piston outward so this is what is happened in the working of the piston so we can say that the force exerted by gas per unit area is called the pressure of gas and the force exerted per unit area by atmospheric air is called the atmospheric pressure now there is another experiment you have to take hot water and pour it in a glass bottle then blow air into the balloon and remove the air from it repeat it three or two times then you have to pour out the hot water from the bottle and 
fix the balloon at the mouth of the bottle immediately so first what we did we took a hot water in a glass bottle okay hot water was there in a glass bottle then we blow the air uh, into the balloon and we released it and we did this two or three times then we poured the poured out the we poured out the hot water from the glass bottle and we fixed the balloon on the mouth of the bottle and allow the balloon uh, allow the bottle to cool what will happen to the balloon what happened over here means the air inside the bottle from which the hot water is removed is expanded and it is hot when the hot water was inside the bottle the air inside the bottle was hot and expand but when it was allowed to cool what happened the air also cooled so the air pressure outside is higher now air pressure outside the bottle is higher now so the greater air pressure rushes into the bottle and this due to this force the balloon inflates due to this board the balloon inflates that is increased in size into the bottle so this is what is this experiment next one is barometer barometer is a device which is used to measure atmospheric pressure and the scientist tori selly was the first to make a barometer now under the topic pressure of gas in daily life in this we want to transfer the liquid from a vessel which is kept at a higher level to another vessel so how is it possible you can use a tube see this picture children you immerse one end of the tube in the water taken in a bucket and keep it at high level and the other end you keep it in a small vessel here the water doesn't flow down because inside the tube there is air you suck out the air with your mouth and then place it into the smaller vessel you can see that water from the bucket flows into the smaller vessel through the tube if the air is gone the water the outside pressure will be greater so the outer pressure rushes the water into the tube and it goes into the smaller vessel similarly there is a device called siphon it's a device which works on atmospheric pressure and it is used to transfer a liquid from one container to another so here is the picture of the siphon it consists of a plastic bottle and one smaller pipe and one longer pipe smaller pipe is fixed into the lid of the bottle through a hole and it is air tightened properly the longer pipe is fixed into the bottom of the uh, bottle now what you have to do means immerse the end of the long pipe in the water in a bucket placed at a height okay then keeping the small pipe in another vessel you gently press and release the bottle you gently press and release the bottle two or three times when you do this you can see that the water flowing from the bucket to the lower vessel so what happens over here when you press and release the bottle 
the air inside the bottle moves outwards so the air inside the bottle is very low so the water rushes into the tube and goes into the small vessel so this is what is happening in siphon making similarly the working of the syringe when the piston is raised up or pulled up the air inside it decreases so the liquids like medicines can go into the syringe similarly for a straw when the air inside the straw is sucked in with the mouth when you suck in with the mouth the air the pressure of the air inside the straw will be uh, decreasing so the liquid rushes into the mouth through the straw similarly a dropper this is a dropper and it has a bulb when the bulb of the dropper is pressed air inside the dropper escapes out so what happened the pressure inside decreases so the liquid goes into the dropper so these are the various experiments based on the air pressure there are still more experiments which we will discuss in other class so hope you have understood today's topic bye children